Well, today we're going to look at the Marvel version of Battlestar Galactica. As you know, it's one of my favourite TV shows films. Uh, good cheesy fun. Um, it's aged pretty well, actually. It went through a period where it hadn't aged well, and it's sort of come out the other side where it's almost timeless now, especially compared to some of the other Glenn A. Larson shows at the time. Uh, so Marvel thought that this would be a big, uh, a big hit. Um, a lot of, I mean, Star Wars had hit. Uh, science fiction was hugely popular. Uh, the, the Marvel adaptation of Star Wars was one of their biggest hits ever. Um, so they thought Battlestar Galactica get in at the beginning. So they decided to do an adaptation, and they did the adaptation before the the three part uh, show Saga of Star World, the, what was classed as the pilot story, because it was filmed first and separately. Before that was done, uh, and before even certain changes had been put into it, like the in the original script, Serena was going to die in the first sort of uh, three episodes, and that's reflecting in here. So what they did, they they based it on, uh, I suppose you'd call it the shooting script or the preliminary script, but it wasn't fixed, and things changed. So even like they didn't know um, who would be playing what part. So, although some of the likenesses are good in this, some of them are terrible, but some of them are uh, a glimpse of things to be. So, there's a few versions of this super special. There's like a big treasury version. This is the super glossy one, which I've had for years. And the cover is just wonderful. It's a wraparound cover. Really good painting. And then if we open her up. So... Some great Dave Cockrum Cylons there. Uh, and it was these super specials used to be kind of comic adaptations with some articles. Very similar to what in the UK we, we used to have annuals. So we had hardback annuals each year. And these Marvel super specials are very similar to what the format was. Uh, so the art was by uh, Ernie Colon, and what was very unusual is he did the what they, in America they called the penciling and the inking and the colouring all as one. Normally, uh, monthly comic books were done by two or three different people doing the penciling, i.e., drawing the artwork in pencil. Then an inker would ink in all the black, and then a colourist would colour those uh, those pages. Um, and normally they would have multiple people doing this because of the tight scheduling. But this was an unusual one and it was one guy doing it. And it, I think it benefits from it because you, you can sort of get a, a more even tone. Um, but this, this was, you can sort of see that while this wasn't a rush job, it's certainly not as, as rushed as the monthly issues started. Um, you can see that it's a little bit rough around the edges sometimes and sometimes that's because they just didn't have designs for things um, So you can see it's basically the same story as the three-part TV pilot um, Weirdly the the I don't know what you'd call the person that does the the, the, the captions I think I don't know whether Ernie did this as well or someone else did it but they sort of so this guy later on in the comic is Boltar and this is the this isn't Boltar and it sort of swaps so here this guy's saying um, we all agree blah 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 thanks to Boltar mentioning this guy who says inappropriate but this isn't Boltar later on in the comic it's this guy looks like Lex Luthor and you can see yeah it doesn't quite doesn't quite follow what happened in the TV show. Uh, Wilfred Hyde White must have been cast very early uh, because he's in it, but then he's not playing President Adar. So I imagine what happened is, you know, Ernie was probably told that Ernest Hyde White was in it and they just assumed he'd be playing President Adar. Um, Lorne Green, I think, was known to be playing Adama, so vaguely correct. And there you go, you see. That he's Boltar on this page, the bald guy, not the other guy. So a bit, a bit rushed, not quite all there. It's a lovely adaptation. Um, look at them Cylons, they're brilliant. Great artwork, great colouring. So it follows the story fairly closely up to a certain point. Um, goes through, 
and then we can see that uh, this is Colonel Ty originally. So they thought Colonel Ty would be a, a white Italian actor, so they started drawing it as such. And then uh, Ernie had to go through and slightly alter to try and make it once it was cast as uh, the actor that played him in the show, Terry Carter. Um, sometimes they get it, sometimes they don't. Basically on some shots they've just put an afro on the uh, the drawings of the Italian guy. And then later on Ernie would have to revisit this artwork a third time to remove all the uh, the battle dresses uh, to put them more in the uh, like they wore on the show. But we'll get into that in a second. So yeah, so it goes through. You got all the standards of Starbuck looks about 12. Um, great artwork. Again, because the, it was so rushed, so like Apollo's suddenly blonde, even though he's then black. It's just weirdly, weirdly rushed. Um, but I like it. I think it's, I, I like this sort of raw artwork style. So I mean, there's actually an action hero in this one. Um, so yeah, so the, the, the story progresses. Um, and then it sort of stops halfway through and we get some articles, some great artwork. So, you know, behind the scenes shots. I oh, love that. That's so good. Different articles about how they did stuff. Good read. If you, I mean, you can still pick this up really cheaply, so it's well worth picking up. Um, I like I say, very reminiscent of an annual, a UK annual, and then the story picks up and it, it starts to get a little bit rushed towards the end, um, but they do follow the story sort of okay. Again, there's Boltar, bold, um, and Boltar of course dies in this as he did in the original, meant to in the original show and did in the, uh, the film release. Because uh, in the UK we didn't know there was a TV show particularly. We had the film release, the second film, the third film, and then one Sunday the TV show started showing on ITV, I think. And it was a revelation. It was just, what, there's more of this show? Of this this product? Um, so it goes through. Very verbose talky Cylons in this. Uh, and then I'd say one thing you get is... Uh, Serena was meant to die, so she's basically saying, you've got to promise to look after Boxy, and she's coughing all the way through it. Um, so it's brilliant, it's really good. And then this was a huge success, and Galactica looked like it was going to be a massive, massive success. So Marvel took the very quick decision to start up a monthly. So what they were going to do, like they, they've done before, is, is you split this up into like three issues to make the first few issues of the, the monthly. That gives you time to then start prepping issue four onwards. They've, they've done it many times, like with uh, the motion picture, etc. Star Trek, the motion picture, sorry. So what they did, but this was so inaccurate in places that they decided to get Ernie to redo his artwork again. So we can see if we go through, this is issue one, collector's item. Still only to take five cents. So you've, you've got things like the same artwork here. Should we try and see if we can compare the two and you can see where it suddenly changes. So you've got like the splash page. Yeah, just you reuse that. And then the second page changes completely. So they use bits of the artwork. Let's see if we can show you. So you see they use bits of the artwork, but they redo Sort of bits of it. Actually, that one's the same. I was looking at that page. So let's have a look. So, again, not as glossy, not as nicely coloured. Uh, they've put hair on Boltar, or the guy that's meant to be Boltar, even though the captions still don't make any sense. But look, they've put hair on. Can you see? Bald hair. Bald hair. Um, and this goes on, matches for a few pages. Oh, do you remember the, the uh, ads you used to get? So 
So then you follow it down, it's still using the original artwork, and then suddenly, wham bam, we're into new artwork. And this again is quite rushed, so it's quite basic. Not much shading or anything on it, but they were, they were sort of trying to flesh it out. So if we go back to the original, see that is over pretty quickly, like two panels. So they're trying to flesh it out, because they've got to get three issues out of this thing. Um, so the artwork, that's off to all new, all new artwork. It's very hard to get these apart. And it's back to the adapting. You see, they've changed Ty now into to look more like Terry Carter. Let's find the page and we'll have a look. So here we go. Look. And they put them in take them out of the battle dress and more into the uh, correct dress that he was wearing. And you can see that I can focus on it. Come on, the light's on it. There we go. So again, slightly changed artwork. Hey, look. The Mattel toys used to have all them. Then we're into new artwork again. Just not anywhere near as detailed. New introduction for Starbuck. And then we get the changes. So you can see that. Can you see that one? It's difficult to fold these. So you can see they've removed all his battle dress and turned him into a. Uh, Better rendition of the actor. The same there. And that, that covers on. So they use a lot of the artwork, and then so issue one, sort of, you get the odd page here and there of different artwork, all brand new stuff. And then from issue two onwards, it starts to become more and more separated from the the super special, because um, obviously they got to flesh out the story. Um, and again, quite nice but crude artwork. So we get all the checking the fleet for poisoning, pluton poisoning, uh, which isn't in the original. Or well, it might be in there, but it's like one page. And it starts to follow the story more closely. And it's a really good adaptation. I do like this one. Uh, often have a read of it. Oh dear, poor Johnny. Johnny didn't get much in the early issues of the comic. He did get his own uh, storyline towards the end, which was quite good. Um, so yeah, so it fleshes out, removes all the thing about Serena dying, um, but fleshes it all out. Um, They obviously didn't have reference shots for the guns there, for the blasters. But yeah, well worth, well worth picking out the monthlies as well, because like I say it's almost a completely different strip at this point. And that just carries on. And we get... God, there's so many adverts in these old ones, isn't there? And it just fleshes out completely what was basically three pages. Becomes a whole comic. The Ovions are sort of better looking. Um, yeah, so they, it was quite a success. Although it's good reading the uh, the, the the letters pages in these because people start complaining about the crappy artwork, which is is always nice. The effort they put in, and then from a sort of episode four or issue four, they started going their own way. So I. I to do new stories and there were no new stories ready at this point so they decided which I think they should have carried on doing they decided to adapt two of the TV episodes so it's the Lost Gods of Cabal and they replaced uh, Ernie Colon with the great Walt Simonson and this is where the artwork becomes glorious so this is a, a two issue adaptation of the episodes four and five uh it'd all been nailed down by now so they knew the actors although certain actors they didn't have rights for 
So some actors don't look like their screen counterparts, but the artwork becomes much, much nicer, much, much more polished. And it's a great two part adaptation. So you've got part one, look at that cover. That is lovely. And then part two. And then they did these two issues. And I think they probably should have then carried on adapting it, but they'd, I think they'd sort of more or less caught up by that point. Um, so they started going off and doing their own storylines, which I must admit, some are really good. Some drag on interminably. So they started off with this idea that, that Adama, when he was on Kobol, he glimpsed some stone tablets and he can't remember them. So he decides in this storyline to, uh, to go into this thing called a memory machine. Um, and it ties him up then. So like for issues and issues, he's stuck in this bloody memory machine. No one's in charge of the fleet, uh, and Count Asaya Uri tries to take over the council. So, good stuff, but it's sort of... Hey, Micronauts, remember them? Um, it does go on and on a bit. Um, Starbuck and Apollo were really nicely uh, characterised in the Marvel comics. And to be honest, I, I read these before I really saw the episodes. So this was sort of my introduction to a lot of the concepts that we got in the TV show that we didn't have in the, the pilot or the movie version. Um, so I love these as a kid. I used to get them, run down to the comic shop, get them, devour them. I'd read them, reread them, buy multiple copies and cut the artwork out. But here he goes, he goes into the memory machine. That's him, he's, he's sort of then tied up for several issues. Um, and this also, I suppose, hey, that's nice. One of my other favourites, Star Trek motion picture. Uh, but what that allowed them to do was to do like flashback stories. So that's the next issue, issue seven. Um, I love Marvel covers because they absolutely in no way, shape or form reflect what's inside the comic. They're always sort of heightened to the nth degree. The Star Wars ones are brilliant. I always remember the, uh, I think, I can't remember if it's issue three or four, uh, and it's the uh, cantina episode you know part of the film where Ben Kenobi cuts off the walrus man's arm and on the cover it's just brilliant it's like him wielding his lightsaber and Luke fighting and saying you know use that lightsaber Luke uh Luke, that lightsaber Ben or we're dead it's like oh it's just madness so this allowed them with the memory machine to go back into uh um flashbacks and we got like uh Adama and Boltar the early years um, and glimpses into what life was like, you know, in the colonies um, before the show, which is really good, really interesting. So, like this one, this is young, uh, young Captain Adama and Lieutenant Ty, Lieutenant, I suppose I should say. Um, ooh, look, Gold Cylon, never had him but wanted him. Um, so, it's a flashback, it's really good, it's a good storyline. Um, but it just drags on and on. So we're up to issue eight, issue nine, and this uh, sort of weird space mimic, like the thing type creature, comes on board the Galactica and starts imitating people. Um, and again, Adama's still stuck in there. There he is. I love this one. This is my, one of my favourite storylines. It was so good. Um, Muffet can tell that it's not the real Cassiopeia. So attacks there. Muffet featured a lot in these comics. Um, and then the, the creature eventually dies because of the surfeit of emotions and good feeling. He explodes. We've all been there, haven't we? Um, great, great stuff. And then they issue 10. They go off and start. I think the Dharma comes out at that point. I'm not sure. He might still be in it in this one. Um, and we go off and have sort of adventures on other planets where they're, they're looking around the, uh, the different solar systems. Uh, and they started bringing in different artists. Um, so this is much more, look at that, sort of heroic, classic style. Oh no, he's still in there, bloody hell. Um, 
this was good. I did like that they used to, in the comics, they put the name, like Space 1999, they put the name on the helmet. I don't know whether that means that the artwork just wasn't good enough that you couldn't recognise them. So this was a living space planet. Great storyline. Again, really good. And then they go off and uh, issue 11, they go to Scavenge World. Scavenge World. And this was a running storyline. And this was basically... Oh, he's still in there. God, dear. I should have realised, actually, because one of the plot lines on Scavenge World is that they do a deal. So they find this sort of uh, Sargasso Sea of spaceships in space and it's this world hey Rom, and it's this world where uh, everything's done on trading and gambling so starbuck fits right in great great storyline uh, but the woman that runs this says she can get adama out of the memory machine all oh, the fans sigh of, sigh of relief um so they do that they go through she gets him out but in the meantime the cylons have followed uh, the Galactica there, so this is wonderful because we haven't seen the Cylons much like the TV show They uh, disappear for a while so the Cylons Follow them there and there's this massive great battle um, Really well done Star Look at this Star Trek motion picture stuff Models oh, Travel backwards time and then they after Adama's out they sort of go on to independent stories oh, look. Boxes dying from radiation poisoning, and the two people look at him and go, Ah, there's no point looking. Don't blame them. Uh, this was a great issue. So, uh, Apollo gets into a dogfight with a new version of the Cylon, and he's much better. And it's just, it's glorious. They end up stuck on this planet, fighting it out. And he's like the Terminator, this Cylon. He cannot be stopped. Um, and lovely artwork. Uh, who did the artwork in this one? Walt Simonson again. And he's more like a sort of samurai, this uh, Terminator. There he is. It's just great. It's a brilliant storyline. Um, and then it went on. So there was the, the sort of classic people get infected and become cavemen storyline. It's they did in so many TV shows, not Galactica, but in other shows like Space 1999. Um, Starbuck had stayed on Scavenge World, so one of his uh, deals that he'd done is that he would stay there. So he was out of the comic for quite a few issues, and then they did one where he returned, and it was a big thing. Um, this is interesting. I've got two versions of this one. So I've got the, the US one, and then weirdly, an actual UK 15p. I just thought they they just didn't put the barcodes on we got the same editions i didn't realize they actually reprinted covers for the uk which you know is, is sort of interesting it's exactly the same comic inside new cover so be on the lookout for all them variants um and then the lady that, that was the lady i can't remember her name but she runs scavenge world um there she is your rail your rail against me and i'll win uh -huh. Um, so she comes back, lots of adventures. This was a great storyline. So this was um, uh, Apollo, Starbuck and uh, Athena go down onto this planet and there's this shape-changing monster and it's very much like the, uh, you know, the uh, Giga's alien. Great, great issue. And then it started to start run out of steam. I think that by now the TV show had finished. Um, so they, they started to go off into odd... Uh, odd issue so it was like Jolly's got his own storyline where he becomes this sort of secret agent guy on a ship and it, it, it started to lose it and then I think sales by now had died so this is 22 and then the final issue came out and they just tied it all up issue 23 and look at Jolly poor fella um, and it didn't didn't end particularly satisfactorily it just sort of finished um, and that was it. That was the end of Marvel's attempt at Battlestar Galactica. They never bothered with Galactica 1980 because I think by the time that had come back, it had gone. Um, you know, it lasted one season and it had abysmal ratings. But these comics are pretty easy to pick up. And if you're a fan of Galactica, I would say grab them because they're a great read. Um, very imaginative storylines. It's unbelievably sort of accurate to the show 
there's nothing really stupid that happens that you go, oh, it can't possibly happen in this in in this show. Uh, at this point, Marvel were doing some great stuff, so I loved this. I loved the Star Trek the Motion Picture comics, uh, which I can do a run of. So if you want to see that, let me know, and I can go through them as well. Um, they, they just unbelievably quality stuff. I remember going down the comic shop and buying all these. I buy five or six comics a month. Loved it. Um, also, these these were reprinted in Star Heroes Digest, which was a little sort of A5 type black and white uh, comic. I love that as well. It, it collected together Micronauts, Star-Lord, Galactica, all into one book. So yeah, so uh, thanks for watching. I hope to, uh, hope you like seeing these comics. Uh, if you want to see different comics, I've got an absolute rookload of comic collections. Doctor Who, Star Trek, Godzilla. Oh, I used to collect so many. I've just found these in the attic, to be honest. That's why I'm sort of reminding me to go through them. And I was missing a few issues. I think I'm still missing one issue. Uh, issue 17, I want to say, which I need to get hold of. Um, but yeah, if you want to see more, then let me know. Uh, and I'll run through them, but if you do see them, grab them. They're, you can still get them cheap. I think you can get like the super special for about a tenner, twelve quid. And these you can pick up. Depending, you know, if you if you shop carefully, you can pick them up for about two, three quid each. Um, and they they're a great read. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Please like and subscribe if you like this. I got tons in my uh, uh, back catalogue of of videos, tons of Galactica stuff, modelling. So have a look. Um, and thanks for watching. See you again next time. Bye.